Hey everyone, I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist, and welcome to the first video in a new series. And this is a series on autism. Now, for those of you who are not new to my channel, um, this is going to seem off topic in comparison to my other videos, because my other videos revolve around what I do for a living, which is I work with trauma, I work with people who have exited high control situations like narcissistic abuse, and, you know, many cults like authoritarian families and high control groups. Um, and autism is something that affects me personally. Um, so just, I'm going to spend a couple minutes just to tell you a little bit about my journey. I was diagnosed um, just a couple years ago, and it was only about four to five years ago that I started to suspect that autism might be something that has affected my life. And most of my life, I was completely ignorant of what autism is. And like most of the world, um, most of us had no idea that autism presents very differently in women and girls than it does in men and boys. And it has come to the attention of you know the medical community. Well, a lot of people in the medical community, some of them haven't quite caught on yet, um, that there are differences in presentation. And the Diagnostic Statistical Manual pathologizes autism and all of the criteria in the DSM um, is related to how autism presents in men and boys, and more specifically, white men and boys. So again, we have to call out some of the privilege within, you know, the the in the system because there there's a system bias toward white and Caucasian folks here um, that leaves out women, leaves out minorities. And that is starting to shift and that is starting to change. And I am so thankful that that's shifting and changing. Now, at the risk of TMI, and if you don't want too much information, skip forward about 10 or 20 seconds. I discovered I had autism because I went into menopause and the hormonal changes brought on by menopause exacerbated the signs and symptoms of autism. And that led me to the doctor because I was experiencing so many changes that I didn't understand what was happening. And I ended up just kind of happening across a book about how autism presents in women. I thought I was reading a memoir and that book which was called Autism in Heels by Jennifer Cook O'Toole. That book is the book that convinced me I needed to get evaluated because there was so much overlap in her experience and mine. And that convinced me that, oh my gosh, I'm an autistic person. And I've been learning and learning and learning ever since. And April is Autism Awareness Month. Um, I don't like, and this is my personal preference, I don't like the title and within the actually autistic community, we would rather see it say something else like actually autism month or autism pride month or autism understanding month rather than just awareness because awareness again has a stigma to it and it points to pathology and I'm going to argue that it's not pathology. Now, I do want to share my screen for a minute because this is just going to be a little tiny primer on what my videos are going to be about. So understanding autistic traits. So I'm going to talk about like what a society assumes and what's actually happening in each one of my videos in this series. So here are just, again, some primer examples. Eye contact. Well, it's true that Autistic folks might not make eye contact to the level that the world expects us to, but it doesn't mean we're disobedient and it doesn't mean we don't listen. We pay attention differently and sometimes not making eye contact means we're actually listening and taking in more of what you're saying. And there's also an element of just refusing to perform because that performative eye contact is ableism. Um, a lot of times our behavior is labeled as aggressive and oppositional, and that's because it's misunderstood. It can be expressive and highly sensitive, but that doesn't mean it's aggressive and oppositional. That just means that maybe our behavior doesn't align with what somebody else thinks it should be. Um, we're often called obsessive and accused of having limited interests. Well, we have specific interests and we're more likely to take a really deep dive and learn every little detail that we can about a topic. And these specific interests are really pleasing and they bring joy. And for me, 
it can give me that internal sense of purpose and fulfillment the more I know about a particular topic. Oftentimes our body movements um, are called weird or annoying or disruptive or our gestures or sounds that we make, but that's stemming behaviors and stemming behavior, stemming, first of all, is short for self-stimulation and stemming helps us to express ourselves and self-regulate and self-regulation is something we all need more of out in the world. Um, we're accused of lacking empathy and having an inability to relate to others. And sorry, guys, that's just flat out BS all the way across the board. We have different communication styles. And one of my videos is going to go into the double empathy problem so we can talk more about these, dif these different communication styles. Um, we're accused of living in our own little world. Well, we might be more introspective inside our heads, but we also have the ability to see details and spot patterns that other folks can't. So our strengths are, might be different than, different than your strengths, and that's okay. And we are just assumed to have a disorder, and this stigma largely comes from that medical model and the DSM pathologizing everything, when I'm going to disagree. It's not a disorder. It's a whole and complete identity of who we are. So just to give you a little primer of what's to come, and I hope you'll stick with these videos on autism, whether you're autistic or not. And I really hope if you're not autistic that you will listen so we can all come to a better understanding of each other. All right, everyone, if you find this information helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss any videos. I'll see you in the next one. Happy self-discovery, everyone.